Good uh, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, wherever you're joining us from in the uh, in the world, and uh, welcome to the next in the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar series. And uh, here today to talk about how to trade rejection candles, and um, quite a, a simple but interesting and, and useful uh, subject, which we could talk about for uh, the whole afternoon. But uh, as it is, we've only got about forty minutes. All right. Um, so you know, wherever you are joining us, I appreciate. 2020 has been a rather tumultuous year and uh, we here at Admiral Markets hope you're, hope you're all well, hope you're all safe and, and thank you for joining us, okay, for uh, this little part of your own uh, trading journey. And, uh, you know, if you're watching this here live with us, if you've got uh, ideas or questions or thoughts, okay, please, you know, be quick to put them in the chat box or if you're watching this on demand late okay on youtube and you've got uh, questions or comments or thoughts or even ideas for future sessions please put them in there we always uh, interact we love to uh, to sort of see interaction with uh, with uh, other traders but as i said today we're going to talk about how to trade rejection candles uh, and if you're watching this here with me live okay it'd be great to to know what if any experience you have of trading rejection candles i appreciate as always that uh, the we have a vast range of experience in our room here for people who join us, okay, from complete beginners to people who've been trading, or experienced traders for, for many years. So, you know, if you have uh, your own thoughts and ideas on how to trade rejection candles, put them up in the chat box. I'll uh, I'll gladly sort of have a look and interact. And you know, maybe you've got your own ideas and ways of uh, being able to trade them. And I'm, uh, as always, I'm fascinated to hear the way other traders look to engage with markets. So we're going to talk about, you know, well, what is a rejection candle, right? As I said, I appreciate there'll be some people watching this here for complete beginners to traders and trying to understand and grasp the sort of, you know, the, the simple uh, basic elements of trading. Uh, and the truth is we were all there at one point, okay? You know, it doesn't matter whether you've been trading for, two, you know, two weeks or two uh, two decades, okay? You know, we, we were all there at one point, okay? And just trying to understand and grasp the, the kind of real basic elements of, uh, you know, of, of candlestick charts. How do we identify them on charts? Okay, that, that, that is actually, there's a little bit of nuance to that. There's a little bit of subtlety to that as uh, as you'll see as we go through. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll finish off is talking about, well, you know, how can we build a simple trade plan that would include rejection candles, right? Something that, so you could take away from today uh, and actually sort of embed into your trading over the next couple of days, see how that actually works for you, whether res uh, rejection candles resonate with you in the way that you actually like to look to uh, to trade, that can be uh, pretty useful. And if there's time at the end, you know, we'll have a little look at some uh, ideas on live markets, okay? So I uh, appreciate that always helps, just makes things a little bit clearer. So stay with us till the end and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at live markets. So uh, for those who don't know me, my name's uh, Paul. I've traded for many years, okay, for both funds and for uh, high net worth individuals. I've coached many traders over the years as uh, as well. Uh, for my uh, trend trading, okay, I, uh, I, I tend to be uh, looking to trade dominant trends, okay, for my uh, swing and uh, end of day positions. And I'm more of a reversal and mean reversion trader for uh, shorter time frames. Uh, and here we are today, Admiral Markets, okay, a uh, Forex and CFD broker with a, a wide range of financial uh, instruments that are licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, uh, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products uh, and allowing the opportunity to engage with markets using both uh, MT4 and MT5 and the own Admiral Markets Supreme uh, Edition. If you've got any questions about Admiral Markets, get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help you. So let's talk about rejection candles, okay? Be interesting to know here, you know, of the people here joining us today, how many of you, A, know what a rejection candle is? Or B, do you use them? Are they part of your uh, sort of trading arsenal, okay, of particular uh, setups? Well, you know, a rejection candle is can be defined in a, in a few different ways, but, you know, generally what I want you to understand is that a rejection candle is a pretty powerful candlestick signal, all right? And they are deemed rejections when a candle forms a wick. Let's bring up the old drawing tool, shall we? Okay, that always helps. Just I appreciate that some people will have, uh, you know, their... Uh, their New to trading, I also recognize that uh, whilst you're here at the uh, on the English webinar, English may not be your first uh, language, okay? So, uh, you know, when what we're looking at when someone's talking about a wick, uh, what we're talking about is actually this piece here, okay? This piece here, you know, like, like the wick on a candle. Hey, we're, we're, we're trading candlesticks, fancy that, okay? Wick rejections are formed by an extreme shift in trader bias and sentiment. And, and, and that's actually where I want you to uh, to start to think about, okay? I don't want you just to think, oh, there's a wick. I want you to sort of think, well, what has actually gone on 
what has gone on in the market to actually create that wick because that becomes useful information that becomes useful insight okay what i tell traders is you know the the, the market is always communicating to you okay the market is always communicate to you it's it's your job to, to to learn how to to read its language okay to understand its language okay just like any other language whether it be coding python or, or learning arabic or speaking english okay you know the market is always communicating to you and it's up to you to understand how that market is communicating to you and wix okay and wix rejections okay they can be a very very useful hint on what the market is thinking okay or whether where the next session might you know uh, sort of likely go we attribute that wick with a volatility and a higher probability of move in an opposite direction uh, and today we'll look at the kind of most popular the rejection candles which is known as uh, a pin bar uh, some people would call it because it looks like a pin so uh, as always i uh, i apologize for my uh, I apologize for my drawing as i always say every week i'm a better trader than i am an artist so i uh, beg your forgiveness with my artistry skills all right but um you know as i said sometimes it's called a pin bar because it looks like a pin. Uh, other times it's because it is uh, reminiscent of the uh, childhood folklore tale of uh, Pinocchio, which you uh, may or may not be aware of. You might have seen the Disney movie may, when you were a child. Uh, and if you remember uh, Pinocchio, whenever he tells a, uh, whenever he tells a lie, his, his nose gets his nose gets longer and bigger, okay? And in some ways, these are like a pin bar because actually the the, the, the wick is the nose and, and that is actually, it is it is in fact actually sort of, you know, it's lying to us, okay? It's lying to us in terms of where we think the next session will go. Uh, and invariably what we're expecting to see is, just drawing on here, is that, you know, if, if the market has been, you know, trading all the way down and then it, you know, it prints one of these, you know, rejection candles, a pin bar, well, you know, the nose is pointing down and many people might think that, that actually the, the market will continue down. But actually the, the probability is that for the next session, it might actually turn and move upwards, okay? It's lying about, you know, the direction of the uh, the possible next session. And that's what I was saying earlier, is that, okay, the market's communicating to you, all right? The market is actually telling you a message. It's up to you to learn how to read that kind of that language of the, of the market. And, you know, that comes with practice, okay? There's no you know, there, is, there, are, there are no magic pills you can take for that, okay? There's no potion you can drink. There is no lotion you can rub yourself in that makes you an overnight sort of, you know, uh, you know, ability sort of to be fluent in, in, the, in market, okay? That just comes from experience, right? That comes from experience from looking at charts, from working, doing your analysis, seeing how markets reacted the last time, okay? And then starting to build a picture from, uh, from that. And that's uh, Vincenzo joining us. That's great. That's uh, it's great to see you here as always. And everyone, Ed, Ramesh, okay, uh, coming from Mumbai. Okay, it's fantastic to see you all here. It's really, really good, really uh, great, really useful, and uh, happy to see you all here. It's always great when you join us. And as I said, you know, if you've got experience of using rejection candles, or if you have a particular way that you like to to use them, stick them in the chat box. It's always great to to hear what you're thinking and how you're uh, how you're engaging with markets. So, you know, as I said, you know, if we look at, uh, you know, pin bars, okay, uh, it, it is a very popular trading trigger on its own. It, 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 might you say it's actually, you know, one of the most you know, popular trading trigger, if not the most, okay, and, and it's because it's, it's quite visual, okay, it's quite visual, and quite easy to see. As I said, you know, it's a rejection candle. Uh, sometimes you'll see it's, it'll be called a pin bar. Sometimes you might hear it called a high test or a low test bar, okay? Or it might be called a, uh, a hammer or a shooting star if you're using sort of Japanese candlestick terms, all right? Uh, you don't need to get too fixated on the actual label of it, okay? You don't need to get too, you know, overly uh, worried or concerned about the, the name, okay? What it is is about understanding what, has helped create that pin bar what has helped create this rejection candle okay and what we should expect to see is that a good pin bar should have the open and its close within the range of the previous bar that the actual wick should extend two to three times the length of the body not always the way but it you know it should it should be very clear it's a visual signal you should expecting that long nose to be protruding from all other bars well that might sound kind of you know well yeah of course paul i would expect that but what people sometimes forget is that candlesticks are a reversal pattern in themselves. So there needs to be something for it to reverse, okay? There needs to be a little bit of a trend for it to reverse, okay? So when you're seeing pin bars in lots of in crowded range-bound markets, 
they're not really as valid as when you start to see them at the extend of it at the end of a trend where maybe the markets have overextended and then we start to see rejection candles and price starts to come back and you know good pin bars they stick out and are very obvious that that's that's very true i mean this is a simple visual setup okay it's a simple visual setup and that's that's you know that's what we're looking at and trying to help you understand okay you know as i said it's there on the slide it's a very popular trading trigger okay and and, and a lot of people will quite happily start off their trading career just by trading every pin bar they see on a chart uh, uh, but actually that's not that's not the ideal way to do it OK, that's not the idea. They should have all of those elements that, um, that you know, you can see there on the bottom of the slide. But also there's a, you know, let's say there's one or two other uh, nuances or elements of subtlety that help us. OK, that help nudge the probability just a bit more in our uh, in our particular favor. And we'll talk a lot about that for the uh, for the remainder of the session. So when it comes to looking at how to trade rejection candles, OK, as I said, you know, it's quite a frequent pattern. And it gives a great indication of supply and demand, okay? Markets are driven by supply and demand pretty much just like the rest of life, okay? What you realize once you've traded for a while is that you realize, you know, all of life is, is pretty much all about supply and demand. Uh, and, and it's very clear and easy to see in charts. It, it, many people trade them, okay? But, but not all like how I particularly like to trade them. So, um, you know, what we can see here is, you know, this in this particular case, price has been drifting its way down. Uh, and then you can see for yourself, there is a huge rejection candle there. OK, uh, so remember what we said that, you know, the open and close okay, of the bar should be within the range okay, of the preceding bar. The wick should be, you know, two to three times the length of the body. OK, hopefully you can see that as well uh, and that it should be quite obvious. It should stand out. OK, and that and clearly just even on that little chart, hopefully you can see that it that it does. OK, so as I said, um, these become they're, they're very visual patterns. So they become quite popular because, you know, because actually the, the still the, the vast majority of people trading. OK, uh, markets are, are men and invariably men are visual creatures. And so visual signals appeal to them. OK. Make of that what you will, okay? Make of that what you will. Some people might disagree, some people might agree, okay? But you know, when it comes to rejection candles, it's a very visual signal, and that's what makes them stand out. That's what makes them very popular. But as you'll learn with trading, okay, you know, just because it's popular doesn't mean it's the always the smartest thing to do. Yeah, as I said, you, you know, people who just trade every single pin bar they see in a chart uh, will invariably struggle, okay? What we need to understand is understand the context, okay? Need to understand the context within which that rejection candle happens. I said earlier about, you know, happening it within, you know, in a tight range doesn't really doesn't really help you when it comes to pinball. We need to we need to see moves, okay? We need to see little trends, okay? That we can see at the end of it. It's a rejection candle. Candlesticks are a reversal signal in themselves, okay? So it just takes a little bit of an, a little bit of, in the UK a slang word we would call it nouse, okay? Being a little bit streetwise, okay? Being a little bit smart, being a little bit nuanced okay and understanding the kind of a bit of a wider context and you know and I, i've always talked about it on all of these sessions about you know you're looking for a confluence of events all right you're looking for ideally you know two to four things to come together at one time and place that gives you a trade idea okay that has a, a higher probability of price moving in the particular direction you wish to to, to trade okay and you're and and that's that's a great, great way to, that's a great way to trade, okay? Just been looking for confluence events around particular uh, places on the, the uh, on the chart. And, you know, that allows you to be, that actually has uh, other consequences in your trading in terms of it allows you to be more, uh, allows you to be more patient, okay? Patience is a great trading edge, but I appreciate it. it sometimes it's easy for me to say, oh, just be patient. When in fact, actually, you know, that's not always the easiest thing to, to, to be when you're sat there and you're excited, the market's moving you and you want to get on board it. Well, actually, you know, it becomes much easier to be patient when you know what you're looking for. If you have a particular setup or if you have a particular area, okay, that you know that, you know, when the market arrives there that you're actually looking at to, to operate, well, then it becomes patient because, you know, there's literally quite simply no signal, no trade. Simple as that, okay? The, the easier you make it for yourself, the, 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 the better you're going to be able to perform. So I'm going to give you my interpretation, okay? Uh, uh, so, you know, in terms of rejection candles, and, and what I talk about there is, you know, in markets, I see rejection tails as the most likely indication of where the biggest predators are lurking, all right? Biggest predators in the market, okay? 
not unsurprising that they show rejection of a particular area or direction. As a private trader, okay, as a retail trader looking at that in the chart, it is pointless to try and fight them, all right? Don't try and fight them, okay? Well, by all means, you, you're welcome to, but the likelihood of you winning is very low, all right, okay? Don't fight the market, okay? You know, as I said earlier on, the market's always communicating to you. It's your job to learn, to get in sync with that market so you can actually hear what it's saying to you. You can understand it, okay? And that takes time and a bit of perseverance, a bit of determination. But everyone is capable of that, okay? That is not, um, that's not some God-given right, okay? That is something that you work towards and that you, you, know, you achieve through your, own, through your own dedication and commitment and perseverance. And what we want to do is actually is to work with them to show likely short-term direction. That's when we work with them. So, you know, in this particular example, I know this, this is a, a chart of gold, actually. Uh, uh, you know, there's actually quite a lot of wicks and rejection candles here, but price is moving down until it hits the, in this particular case, 200 period moving average, at, uh, an area of demand that we've seen before. Uh, and then what do we see? We see not one, okay, not two, but actually three, Okay, three candles there, you know, providing rejection. I mean, the first two are proper like pin bars, okay, but you've got three rejection candles there, haven't you? You've got, you've got three wicks pointing down, okay, which is actually giving you an indication of right. And remember what Pinocchio was saying, you know, he's lying. We've got that there, okay, but, you know, that is happening, as I said earlier. It's a confluence event. It's happening at the 200 period moving average, which is also at a period of uh, demand. And you've got two, three candles, okay, all showing this up. So suddenly we have, as I said, a confluence of events, a few things coming together in time and place that give us an indication of where the probabilities are towards the next, you know, likely sort of short-term direction, okay, depending upon the particular time scale that you're trading. Uh, you know, one of these things are on, on these, and, you know, on these particular examples I've shown, if you can see there's, there's, there's no time frame or time scale, because actually it, it doesn't really matter, okay? Once you learn to understand and read these, you know, this could be a five-minute chart, could be a monthly chart, okay? I think it's actually a weekly chart, but the, the, the thing is, it doesn't really matter, all right? Once you can learn to understand and read this, okay? You know, I say it, it, a bit like reading a sheet of music, okay? If you were ever as a child, you, you learned to play musical instruments, okay? You had to, to learn to read a sheet of music, okay? And, you know, and, and at first it's very difficult and it all seems just like, Lots of squiggly lines on a you know on a piece of paper, but as you learn and understand it, suddenly you start to be able to make sense of it, and then at some point it clicks, and actually you know you see the you see the music, and that's and that's a little bit like looking at charts here, okay? You know, and you're looking at one or two sort of individual candlesticks, or you, you might not necessarily get the the full the full the full music. It's actually as you learn to read it and understand the interaction and the context, the bigger wider context that starts to help you, okay? That starts to, uh, starts to help you put your, uh, uh, into, uh, into that. Uh, Opera said, yeah, this is gold. Yeah, it is a, this is a, this is a gold chart. I think it's a weekly chart, but I could be wrong, but it doesn't really, as I said, Opera, it doesn't actually really matter whether this is a four hour chart or a, or a four minute chart, okay? If you can, if you could get that. Um, what it is, is it's about, you know, it's about being able to recognize and see rejection candles when they happen and where they happen as well, okay? Always be looking for that confluence of events. So, you know, as we were saying there, okay, that pin bar, it must have that open and close within the previous bar. It must be a wick two to three times the length of the body. It should have a long nose protruding from all the other bars and the better bar pin bars, they will stick out and are very obvious. It's a visual signal, okay? And in this particular, this particular example here, okay, you can see, you know, that basically price has been trending down. Remember what I said, we need to see it, look at reversing something. And you can see that, you know, the open and close, okay? The open and close of this pin bar is within the body, okay? It's within the body of the previous candle. You can see that the wick, okay, is two to three times the length of the body. It's protruding out, sticking out, okay? And, and you know, you can see for yourself that actually what it did is, you know, it, it gives us an indication of where the, the next couple of sessions, uh, where, where the likely direction was. And that, we can use that information to help us, can't we? That can be, you know, that can be really useful, great, great trading information. So um, when it comes to sort of, you know, uh, you know, some simple examples, okay, I thought, you know, we'd put some up here just to, to help you now. Uh, just to think of the context here is, you know, these are bullish, okay? All right, so it doesn't really matter, you know, whether it closes, okay, whether it closes, you know, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bullish close or bearish close on the, on the candle. 
these are bullish. So what we'd be expecting is, let's just say that the market has been, you know, drifting down. Okay. And then we might get to see these particular candles. This one, as you can see, it's a tick because remember what we've got here is we've got, you know, we've got our open here. And, and, and this is, as I said, right at the start, trying to understand that the price has joined that session has gone all the way down. The sellers have, you know, been in control until at some point the buyers stepped in, wrestled control, okay, and pushed the price all the way up higher and higher and higher until in this particular case, it closed right on the, uh, it closed right on its highs, okay. That is, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a real example of a, a bullish reversal that has occurred, okay. And, and, you know, and so we would be expecting, okay, we're expecting price for the next session to go in the bulls. The bulls have taken control of that market. Okay, who is in control? And it's the same with this. Even though what we might see is that price opened here and closed here, what we can see is we've got a nice small body. Okay, uh, you know, a, a little or no wick to the top, and actually the wick beneath. Okay, it's two to three times. Okay, the the length of the body. So we would be expecting this at the end of a downtrend or end of a down move. You know, that could be actually useful in helping us identify what might be the uh, the probability of of movement for the next session. Some people would look at this particular next one as perhaps like maybe a doji, all right, because the open and the close are exactly the same point. But, you know, in, in particular case, what we're looking at is, you know, the, the body's kind of, you know, it's high up the uh, the candle. We've got a wick to the downside, right? I mean, you know, this is kind of, you know, the market is very often when you're looking at doji, what you're looking at is indecision, okay? The market's in balance. And if we've come down, we could expect to go all the way up. I've included this one here because, you know, this is uh, useful to me, okay? And it's useful as a, as a term of a, uh, as a style of rejection candle. I want you to just think about what's happened here. The market is opened here. Price has traded down during the session. The bulls have stepped in, taken control, and the bulls have taken the price all the way back up, past the open and driven it much, much higher and closed all the way in its highs. That is a very, very strong rejection candle. It was, let's clear some of these drawings. It was rejecting, you know, the downtrend that was coming uh, and really the bulls have really, they are in control, all right? The bulls are in control and they are driving, they're likely to be driving price north, okay? So even though the wick, you know, isn't two to three times, you know, what in this particular case in terms of rejection candle, you know, I'm comfortable with it because I understand the psychology underneath what has actually happened and what has gone on to create that particular candle, all right? And that's what I'm useful. Whereas the next one, it doesn't work because if we think about it, price has been going down, price has been coming down, price has been going down, price opens here, price during the session, it falls, it falls, and the bulls step in and they take it up, but they can only sort of drag it up here and close here. Does that give you the, the same insight that the bulls are totally and fully in control? Okay. And the answer is no. All right. The answer is no. Whereas the one here, this closed right on its highs. Okay. The bulls are firmly in control. There's no, you know, there's no, um, there's no ambiguity in the message there. That's, that's perfectly in control. Whereas here, the bears are still in control. Okay. It's not a good enough example. It's not a, it's not a, a good pin bar. Okay. That's not a good rejection candle. So we would give that a miss. And on the flip side, okay, so so that you can understand it, well, you know, if we look at a uh, bearish pin bar example, so what we're going to be expecting is, you know, the, the market has actually been, the market has been going up, okay? Our market has been trending up, okay? In this particular case, it opens here, the bulls take it all the way up, and then for whatever reason, the bears step in, and they take control of it, and they force price down, and they force, they're so strong that they've pa pushed past the open and close right on its lows, Okay right in its lows and we're expecting price you know to continue to reverse okay to reverse and then to continue down from from what's happened in that session that's very clear okay it's very clear it's a very it's a very strong signal and and, and that's what we like to and that's what we particularly like to uh, uh, like to see uh, and the same with uh, the next one even though you know there was a it was a green candle a bullish close what we can see is that as price has come up okay price has uh, opened here it's pushed up and it's been pushed back and actually closed okay you know and yes it did close above it's open but you can see for yourself the body you know there's a huge big wick there there's a lot of rejection going on there the, you know the bears are grabbing control of that and we would be expecting okay the higher probability is that price will drift down from that it's a little bit like the one we just looked at on the other side this is kind of like a doji and it's remember you know the open and close is the same it's in balance but it, it's where it's happened you can see that there is a wick two to three times okay above both the open and close price is pushed up 
burn has been pulled back. Okay. And that's, you know, we're happy with that. Similarly with this one, this is, you know, a, a bit of an example like what we saw in the previous slide is that, you know, I'm comfortable with this as a rejection candle. Uh, the reason being because, you know, price has been coming up, price has been coming up, price opens here, it pushes up, price, the bears step in and they just drive, drive the price down, drive price past the open all the way down and close it on its lows. That's a, that's a very strong signal of a reversal that has gone on there. You know, the, the bears have wrestled control of the market. Okay. So why, why would you want to fight them? Why would you want to fight them? The probability is, is that price will, will move down from when you see that particular candle. Uh, but this one isn't okay. You know, if think about it, price has been coming up, price has been trending up. Price opens here, pushes up during the session. The bears step in and take it down, but it closes here. Okay, it closes a bullish close. Okay, you know, are the bears really in control there? Are the bears really totally, you know, in overwhelming dominance of that particular market? Uh, and the answer would be no. So why would we want to fight that? Why would we want to fight that? There's no no point there. Nothing, nothing to be gained from that at all. So we give it a miss. So many people like to trade pin bars or rejection candles at the, at the end of a trend, okay, to signal the end of a trend. And, and that's, that's perfectly fine. That's actually perfectly fine. Uh, personally, and as I said, I'm going to give you my take is that um, I like to trade, you know, those pin bars, rejection candles. I like to, where possible, to trade them within an identified trend as part of the pullback when we have the confluence of events where we might have, you know, price bouncing off a, a particular supply and uh, demand area or a support resistance level. So what I, you know, where I personally prefer to trade them is that we've identified that, you know, we're in a trend, price has been trending down and then it has a pullback uh, and that pullback ends, okay, with the rejection candle there, which is, as you can see in this case, is also bouncing. It's gone up to the 20 period moving average and it's been thrust all the way down. Uh, and for those of you who joined me, I think it might've been last week or the week before last, we did a, uh, we did a, you know, a, a whole session on trading using just a 20 period moving average. And we touched upon an elements of that. So you'll find that in the webinar archive. Okay. So be sure to go in and enjoy that. You'll, you'll find it very, very useful, but this is how I particularly like to trade rejection candles. Okay, not as not as the end of trends, but actually as a pullback within an existing trend. Okay, price price is moving down. Price in this case has drifted up. Okay, and this is a chance to sort of sell the rallies in a downtrend. Okay, and when I see a rejection candle like that, that is an ideal way to be able to sort of take that take that trade and 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 make it happen. Okay, be able to to join that existing trend. Remember what I was saying right at the start when I when I look to trade. Okay, when I'm looking at my sort of a, a swing in uh, position trades, you know I'm kind of looking to trade. Okay, with the dominant trends. When there's pullbacks like that, that's what I'm looking to try and achieve. So you know. We've had a bit of a chat about rejection candles and how what they look like and how they're created and what we're looking for. But invariably, we also want to understand, well, you know, how are you going to trade them? How are you actually going to enter? So um, there, are, there are several ways. Today, I'm going to just talk about the, the kind of the safest way, the standard way. I appreciate, you know, for uh, uh, new traders, that will help them. I also appreciate that you know, there might be some traders here watching us that uh, have a bit more experience. That, you know, there are ways to actually tighten up and sharpen up your uh, entries on rejection candles to help you in terms of your reward to risk ratios. But today, um, I'm just going to talk about, you know, the kind of the simple standard way to enter uh, based on uh, your risk profile. Uh, and what we're looking to do is, you know, the safest way is to is to buy the break of the high if we are looking for a long trade, okay? Uh, and with a stop loss below the low of the candle for a long trade. Remember, remember, we never ever trade without stop loss, okay? In this particular case, what's good for us is, you know, it's important for us to know our exits in any trade and our exits for when we're wrong, our exits for when we're right. Uh, and with a stop loss, well, you know, for a uh, rejection candle or pin bar, you know, our stop loss can be just, a, you know, a few pips beneath the low of that particular candle. And the safest way for us, as I said, to enter is basically looking to buy the break, okay, of the high. So normally that might be just a couple of pips plus the spread for a for a buy trade, okay, that allows you to just basically have a place an order if you're trading this on 
four hour one a daily weekly charts etc if you're trading this on a one minute chart okay and i'm not suggesting you should uh, if you're a new trader but you know you might have to enter there at the market just because of the uh, to the speed at which things might be uh, might be occurring and happening but that's what uh, that's what you're particularly looking at okay just the safer you know buy the break of the high with your stop loss beneath the low as i said you know advanced traders there are uh, extra ways that you can do it if you if you want to come on to traders yard okay you know if you're interested in more advanced ways to do that come on to traders yard just put a little question up there on it and, and we can have a little chat about it but uh for, for today it's just you know how to do the the standard standard way to to, to do that so okay remember what i was saying okay is that uh, pin bars are likely indicators of where the biggest predators are lurking okay that's what we're thinking of where are the biggest predators are lurking they show rejection of a particular area or direction and as a private trader, it's pointless to try and fight them. All right. It's pointless. Don't, you know, it's pointless. Work with them. All right. To show the likely short term direction and ideally look to trade them with the trend. All right. Ideally as pullbacks within a trend. Okay. But wherever you see them, and especially if you see a couple of them, uh, don't fight them. Okay. Don't fight them. Very often what we find is like new traders, you know, they want to they project their ego and think that they know best. Okay. They think they know better than the market. You don't. Okay. Uh, I've been trading for many, many years. I, I don't know better than the market. Okay. Fighting the market, it, there's only normally one winner uh, and it's not you. Okay. You can take from that what you will. All right. It, it's a case of just, you know, when market is communicating to you, read it, understand it, and let the, you know, let the market tell you where it wants to go next. Okay. Don't try and fight it. Well, it's more like trying to be a, a talk about it. You know, more like trying to be a, like a surfer. Okay. You know, you, you don't, you know, if a surfer goes out and tries to fight the ocean, well, you know, they're just going to get crashed on the rocks. They're just going to get tired very, very quickly. So, you know, a surfer goes out there and looks to try and position themselves so they can, so they can ride the, the kind of the best waves. Okay. Not every wave ride the best waves. And a, a little bit like a trade like here. Okay. Is that this helps you position yourself to ride the better waves rather than, rather than just trying to fight the market. So when we come to sort of talking about creating a price action trading plan, all right, we just have to remember that, you know, um, price action, it's a form of technical analysis, but its main focus is on the change in price action. Uh, and we're ignoring the use of other indicators. Okay. Some people might do, you know, might have, you know, particular oscillators, et cetera, they particularly like, but for today, all we're going to talk about is just a little bit of a, a price action trading plan, quite, quite simply. All right. Uh, and that just gives us, as, as we've talked earlier, that price, okay. And how that price plays out in its candlesticks gives us a good insight into the psychology of the, uh, of the market. Uh, you know, and what this allows us to do is this allows us to, you know, where possible, okay, we have much more cleaner charts, you can have kind of a bit of a stripped down, right, and it makes it easier for traders dealing with issues like analysis paralysis, okay, if you're struggling, because your your chart is full of 30 different indicators, okay, and you're struggling to make a decision, it's, it's because your chart is full of 30 different indicators, it's not helping you, okay, you only need a couple, okay, you only need, keep it very, very simple, okay, as you trade, you'll learn less is more, okay, the less that's on your charts, the better for yourself. So, you know, as always, you know, what I was talking about is part of this is about having that confluence of events. So, you know, one of the first things you've got to do when you're creating a little simple price action trading plan like that is part one is you want to identify price levels there where you believe price will react, okay, to provide a possible opportunity. So that can be prices, things like support and resistance, that can be big round numbers, that might be uh, areas of supply and demand, okay, depending upon, you know, your, your progression as a trader. Uh, and so, as I've always said, is start the monthly chart and then the weekly and then the daily chart, start drawing in and making notes of those particular significant levels of support resistance. Maybe there are particular big round numbers, okay, that have, have been relevant, you know, where, what we saw up until the start of this month was, for example, in pound against US dollar, you know, 130, that big round number 130 price was just bouncing around it, okay. We're seeing euro dollar, euro dollar is going to probably drift its way up to 120 okay and there'll be price reaction around there because it's a big round number and it'll act as a level of support resistance this starts to become useful and interesting to us once you've done that and identified well you know you need some price action triggers okay so you can have simple triggers like inside bars outside bars or the pin bar now what you'll find is that if you go into the trading spotlight uh, webinar archive you know there are uh, there are other sessions that have gone into particular areas of price action trading plans gone into things like inside bars and outside bars 
But today, you know, we're talking about rejection candles. So we're going to focus primarily on, you know, what pinballs bring to the, uh, bring to the, bring to the party. So, you know, we've, we know and understand, you know, now what we're looking at in terms of what we're trying to sort of look for when we're trying to identify pin bars. And, and you know, as I said, just make sure you uh, identify significant levels of the monthly, weekly, daily charts, and then look to see how price reacts at those levels. And, you know, that can be take a little bit of patience. But as I said, it's easier to be patient when you know what you're looking for. And as always, OK, you enter on the trade and the break of the candle. Stop losses on the other side of the candle. You never risk more than 1% per trade. And you're looking to target either two to one or perhaps the next significant level, or perhaps you're using a trailing stop depending upon your uh, particular style. Uh, and really what you're looking to do is to record your trades, review them and repeat them, which is what I go on about constantly. So um, just uh, you know, example that, you know, this is gold on a weekly chart here. You know, this is just... Um, just random bringing up charts okay and in terms of you know you can see here that actually price having price having moved its way up price put in you know a bearish pin bar okay and you can see they're at a uh, at a big round number 1400 okay and, and what we can see is there is that price actually reacted at, and fell all the way back down here until it hit 1200 and you know we had a you know this is kind of a this is like an inside bar a small little rejection candle but the but the next one is a significant Okay, rejection candle, pin bar, okay, that we can see there. There's also a bit of a key reversal. Uh, and then we actually had quite a few of them afterwards. You hopefully you can see there that was just confirming that basically buyers were in control, price drifted its way up. You know, and what we saw here is, let me just clear that draw is, you know, we, we can see a rejection candle, two rejection candles here, which weren't, you know, weren't the top or the end, but it was giving us an indication that the, the trend was coming to an end. And then we saw over the next couple of weeks that it basically did stop out provided a, an engulfing bar before price drifted its way down and then started to put in more rejection candles here. And this, not surprisingly, these were at the 1300 level. Okay. So as I said, you know, you're just looking for confluence of events when you're getting, you know, a bit ends of trends. Okay. With rejection candles at, you know, in this particular case, big round numbers or levels of significant level support resistance, those sort of things can help you. Okay. They can help you enormously. And that's looking to put together small particular um, trading plans around those particular uh, ideas. Uh, and this is uh, a case of, you know, the, this is pound against the uh, the US dollar here, okay? Uh, this was kind of like the, the daily chart. Uh, and this is more about, you know, we can see that price is in a, a bit of a downtrend. Uh, and as price pulls back, we can see that, you know, there are rejection candles here forming. And then we get a final rejection candle before price falls away, okay? It then has a little rejection candle, which is the end of it, before price pulls its way up, before once again, get a rejection candle which is also a key reversal candle and then we get another couple of reversal candles rejection candles there before price drifts its way down again uh, and what we can see here is that price drifted all the way down to the 120 level first time it does it get bounces off it and then it comes back down to it and what does it do it prints a, a rejection candle as part of a false breakout and that i'll do a session on false breakouts in the uh, in the future uh, before price actually sort of drifted its way up and now we at that particular time, then you started to see another rejection candle there. So, you know, as I said, you can, even looking on that chart, there are actually quite a lot of rejection candles you could see. But as I've said, it's more about, you know, just trying to get a confluence of events, okay? When you see them as part of the pullback and an existing trend, that's a very nice way to take your uh, trade. Or if you're seeing them, you know, as, as a false breakouts or bouncing off big round numbers, that can give you an indication that if you're in the trend, that well, that exactly that kind of existing trend is, is pretty, much, pretty much done and dusted. Uh, and this is the dollar Swiss franc. Okay, and this one I wanted to use because just to show that there's all sorts of, you know, even on monthly charts, that you know it can be quite uh, quite fascinating to see how we we see you know rejection candles. You can you can see probably some of there from the start. Okay, as the as the price is going down, there's rejection candles until it actually price flips, uh, and then once it's above the, uh, the moving averages, well then we start to see you know then we start to see rejection candles here. Okay, off the twenty and fifty before price drifts its way back up comes down rejection candles then we get more rejection candles here after the 50 period moving average before it drifts up okay for a, a month or two uh, and then even here you know we just basically see there's rejection candles there before price drifts down and then it puts in another rejection candle before price drifts up 
than this year. It's come down, and actually, what we've seen is prices beneath the uh, the moving averages, and we've just got quite a few rejection candles there. All of them, even after the COVID crash, they all had wicks to the north. Okay, just giving us an indication that the price was likely to go in the opposite direction, and we drifted our way down there. So, rejection candles occur on all time frames. Okay, and you can see them on all time frames. And part of it is a little bit about understanding, you know, the the ideal trading time frame for yourself. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, rejection candles are, are a powerful candlestick signal and they're deemed rejections when a candle forms the wick. Wick rejections are formed by an extreme shift in trader bias and sentiment. We attribute that wick with volatility and a higher probability of a move in the opposite direction. We prefer to focus on them and trading them as part of a, a pullback in a trend. Uh, and we can add them to our price action trading plan. Okay, it doesn't really require any use of other indicators. I mean, we have, you know, on those we've had like kind of moving averages to give us an indication dynamic support resistance. But you know, there's no need, no real need for other indicators like RSI or stochastic, etc. Uh, it's a pure form of tech analysis because we're looking at the actual price. Okay, it allows us to trade off cleaner charts. And uh, when looking for price action, pin bars triggers at significant areas, okay? Significant levels. Remember that. That's what we're looking for, that confluence of events. So uh, we've got a few minutes left, a couple of minutes left. So why don't we uh, switch across to the live charts and have a look at them now? But before that, don't forget to join us next time when you'll see my uh, colleague, Marcus, who's going to talk about how to read Forex charts, including how to uh, read a quote, what's a pip, okay? forex charts explained so we'll be doing that wednesday december 2nd two o'clock london time check your inbox for the uh, web link or sign up on the uh, the website uh, if you want any more analysis and education there's plenty of it on admiralmarkets.com there's lots of resources there that you can utilize if you want to contact us you can contact us at hello admiralmarkets.com youtube.com forward slash admiralmarkets you'll find you know this webinar and all the previous trading spotlight ones and also on facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets Global. Um, so I hope you found that uh, useful. I hope you found that interesting. Okay, as I said, you know, for, for, especially for new traders, just learning to grasp and understand the kind of under, underlying dynamics and price action. Um, hopefully that's given you a little bit of uh, insight and help. Uh, if you'll bear with us for a moment, okay, we'll just switch across the chart. In my last couple of minutes, we'll just look at a couple of, uh, look at a couple of examples in the live markets. So just bear with us there. Okay, so um, I hope you can still uh, hope you can still sort of see um, see my uh, see see me see the slides, okay, or see the charts rather, and hear me as well. Um, this is just a dollar profile. We've got a couple of minutes, okay. Uh, let's have a little look at uh, dollar index, okay, four hour chart here, and uh, I mean the dollar index has been in a pretty much of a downtrend as we're doing this. It's been in a glorious downtrend, and here on those uh, four hour charts, okay, what we can uh, what we can see here is that hopefully. The old draw until it is, you know, as price has been in a longer term downtrend, but every time it kept coming back, this is the 50 period moving average. Hopefully, we can see the arrows are as well. We can see that price performs those price performs those rejection candles okay and that's what we're kind of interested in all right you know we're in an existing trend we can see that price pulls back okay uh, and then we start to see rejection candles in this particular case off a 50 period moving average so, so there's a confluence of events we've got a, we've got a trend we've got a pullback we've got rejection candles and we've got the 50 period moving average remember what i was saying two to four things all coming together at a time and place gives you the opportunity to sort of look at that and identify a a, a good trade uh, good trade idea so uh at the moment we've seen that the uh um We've seen the Kiwi dollar has been very strong against the uh, US dollar. So we've got, you know, strong Kiwi dollar, weak US dollar. Uh, and if, once again, if we look at the four hour charts here, okay, just to uh, uh, just look at, you know, what we've, what we've been going on, what we've been seeing. And, uh, it, you know, the Kiwi against the dollar, if I just, let's just move this a second. You know, if I look at it on the daily chart, okay, you can see for yourself for the last month, it's just been in a very long uptrend, hasn't it? Really great uptrend. But, you know, when we look at the four hour chart during that uh, period, well, you know, we start to see and identify that, you know, there was a very clear trend, okay, which is what we like to see. And, you know, there was also opportunities there, okay. And hopefully you can see, you know, whenever the price is pulled back, in this case, 20 period moving average puts in a rejection candle before price moves up, price comes back again, puts in reject two rejection candles here. And actually the next candle, it fails it, okay. 
there's no perfection in trading. Okay? Nothing, nothing works 100% at the time. But, you know, you keep an eye on it because actually what happens is price pulls back for a couple more uh, four-hour candles before putting in a rejection candle and then price launches itself up. Comes back here, rejection candle before it moves up. There's another rejection candle here before it moves up. Every time price comes up, falls back, it's the 20 period moving average is rejected uh, and price just basically drifts its way up there. Okay. So, you know, in a strong trend, you know, that's the way you could use rejection candles. Okay. Don't try and fight it. Okay. Let the market pull back and then use it as an opportunity to sort of join the existing trend on part of the, uh, on part of the actual uh, pullback in the existing trend. Okay. There we're uh, sadly, we're out of time as always, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we could talk about this all afternoon, but I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it, uh, insightful i hope it helps you with your own trading okay so uh, uh, as always i wish you the best of success with your own trading ladies and gentlemen uh, i'm going to be in the traders yard this afternoon if you want to come and have a chat with me or have your questions answered and failing that wish you the best of success and i look forward to uh, speaking to you next monday traders have a great trading week many thanks